Welcome to our live training session. We're gonna be taking a look in this training module at how to dial in a Honda K24 engine using FuelTech engine management system. Let's jump into some details about our demo vehicle we're gonna be using for our filming. We're going to find our EP3 chassis has had a K24 engine and a six-speed transmission swapped into the chassis. The K24 engine is going to be built. It has upgraded valve train, stock OEM K20 cams. We have a 50-degree VTC gear on the bottom end, we have 12 and a half to one forged pistons and aftermarket connecting rods, and we also have a Type S oil pump. On the intake side of things, we have a Skunk 2 Ultra Street intake manifold paired with a Bosch 82 millimeter drive-by wire throttle body, as well as a three and a half inch cold air intake. Now on the exhaust side of things, we have a race header paired with a two and three eighth inch exhaust. We also have RDX 410cc injectors and an upgraded in-tank fuel pump for the fuel system. We're going to be utilizing also a zero to 100 PSI fuel pressure sensor and a flex fuel sensor wired into our fuel tech to be able to do a flex fuel based tune. We have a lot to talk about here. Let's jump into our very first tutorial, learn how to create a base map to get our engine fired up and start our tuning process. Welcome to our live training session. We just went over all the details to our vehicle. Let's jump into our FT Manager software so we can begin creating our base file and start our tuning process. This tutorial, we're gonna be focusing on input and output setup as well as setting up some of the base settings configurations. The next training module will be jumping into setting up two-dimensional and three-dimensional tables. So things like fuel, spark, variable cam control. It is a pretty lengthy process to go through all the individual settings in just one tutorial. So I'm gonna break this apart into two tutorials so it's a little bit more manageable to be able to go and watch the entire base map creation process from start to finish. So let's go and turn our attention right now into our FD Manager software and we're gonna begin setting everything up that's going to be specific for my vehicle. So the inputs and outputs and configuration I'm going in and working with here in this training module is specific to the wiring that I have done and the sensors that I have installed onto my engine. Now I've documented the inputs and outputs into a simple notepad and actually created an Excel file with all the input and outputs for my jumper harness. So I'm actually running the factory Honda engine harness and chassis harness. Then I'm running a bridge harness or a jumper harness between the factory harness and the fuel tech to keep this as simple as possible. I use this vehicle for a lot of demonstration for a lot of other standalone systems. So I like to make it plug and play as much as possible. So um, I have my own wiring for this vehicle in terms of the input output configuration. There are some plug and play options for K-series on the market. Um, those input output configurations will be different. So yours is not going to likely match mine. Um, so we're gonna go through, set everything up, but just keep in mind that your pinout for input and output configuration is going to be different and uh, you'll have to go through that individually when you're creating your base map. But you'll see the process here from start to finish in this training module. Okay, so we're gonna go in here and I have the software open, we can see I'm connected to the fuel tech. We need to go and calibrate everything, we need to go set everything up here. So what we're working with here is not necessarily going to work for the wiring that I have configured here. So this this file is a generic file, it's not specific to the vehicle. We're actually gonna make a specific file and then save that as a base map and then we'll go through and keep modifying the file as we calibrate and tune the vehicle and uh, pretty simple process, but there is again a lot of details we have to account for. So let's jump in. I'm going to go up here to, we have our file, and then I'm going to go here into new. So we have the option to modify an existing file, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to create a completely new file and mod everything from the beginning. So you can see what that looks like. And then this file, once we're done, will be available in the training course library. It's going to be probably the first thing you see in the training course library. Um, I'm going to have this file and I plan on tuning the car with individual throttle bodies as well. So you'll have two different example files to work from, take a look at for a K series. Um, and eventually I'm going to be adding some additional vehicles into our live training as well. I'm hoping to get something with an LS engine in it so we can incorporate that in for some live training. And I might also have an Evo 8 or Evo 9 that will be picking up into our vehicle fleet here for the school so we can use that as well for filming once that vehicle is uh, purchased and we have that available. So uh, keep on keep a lookout for other vehicles and, and other training modules in the future besides the this vehicle filmed with the individual throttle bodies or the intake plenum. So filming is in two different manners. All right, let's go here to new and we're going to go through and just set this all up. So I am working with first and foremost the ECU model, FT550. That's the 
fuel tech I have, so we have that selected right here. And the vehicle mode should be combustion. It's not a hybrid or electric, so we're not controlling a electric car or a hybrid where it's uh, the petrol motor or motor in general and then the electronic, so we don't have that. We have just a combustion. So in here, we need to go and select some specific things that make sense for us. Um, under the fuel tables, I wanna have closed loop enabled, but I'm not gonna be doing gear compensation right now. This is something we can add on later. Um, I don't have a vehicle speed sensor wired into the fuel tech. It's something I actually need to do. I have not wired that in yet. So I don't have the ability for gear detection because I don't have a vehicle speed source or a gear position sensor to detect gear. So I'm not gonna go and choose these options here. Under the ignition tables, we're not gonna have gear base checked as well, so we're gonna leave this unchecked. Under the drag race features, I'm gonna turn every feature off right now because I just wanna focus on calibrating the engine, and then I can worry about turning on any of these other features or functions at a later point in time, just to keep things as simple as possible right now. Looking here under other functions, uh, we do wanna have the internal data logger checked on. The deceleration fuel cut, we're gonna turn it off right now, but we probably wanna turn it on so that we're in over on our lift throttle. It does shut off the injectors and it saves fuel for fuel economy purposes. So I'm gonna go ahead and just turn it off for right now so we simplify the fuel tuning process. Rev limiter we wanna have in place, we'll keep that checked. We wanna have our thermic fan, or a, I'm sorry, thermatic fan or thermo fan or radiator fan. We wanna have that turned on right here. So that's gonna be our cooling fan, making sure that we have that operating. We do need that functional. I have air conditioning in the vehicle, but I do not have it wired into the fuel tech. I kept this pretty simple, and most race applications are probably dealing with the fuel tech. You're not gonna have air conditioning, so I'm not gonna go ahead and toggle that on. Now, I do have a fuel pump that I wanna control right from the fuel tech. We're gonna be turning the factory in-tank pump on and off when we wanna go ahead and uh, crank over the engine or prime, so we're gonna keep that on here. We do also have VTEC, so we do have that function with the K24 engine. K-Series engines have VTEC and variable cam timing, so we wanna have both toggled on here, so we see VTEC as an option. Going down here, there's a generic duty cycle. Um, I don't have the reverse lockout assigned for the wiring yet. That is something I, I also plan on doing. Uh, the reverse lockout, if you're going in for a six-speed transmission, I the six-speed swapped into the vehicle. If you're going into six gear, you don't wanna accidentally put it in reverse. So the reverse lockout can be enabled or this generic duty cycle can be enabled to control a reverse lockout solenoid so that you can't accidentally shift it into reverse if you're going for six as you're driving. And all that's going to be is just based on vehicle speed and above, let's say three, four, five mile an hour, somewhere in that range, we're gonna turn on the reverse lockout solenoid and uh, it's gonna go ahead and not allow us to go into reverse as we're driving, pretty simple, but I don't have that wire yet, so that's something I plan on adding, but that's something I'm not gonna check right now to keep it simple. Uh, let's go down here a little bit further. Nothing else in our list here is going to be applicable. Let's go to the other side of our list here. Uh, we do have a flex fuel sensor and we were going to be using it and talking about how to do a flex fuel tune here in this training module. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos are going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.